Organized religion is destroying the earth. Um, this is something that I am very, very passionate about um, because organized religion is a very, very evil thing, uh, extremely evil. And a lot of people, unfortunately, are very ignorant about this. And a lot of people are looking right now at the economy and they're looking at a, a lot of other things, um, you name it, environment or whatever, war on the horizon, whatever else, and they're, and they're thinking it's you know, geopolitical and, and, and this and that and this thing's causing that and whatever. It's organized religion that's behind this whole thing. Again, you can check out the video. Um, there's a video proof out there that this Dr. Fauci guy um, spoke at Georgetown University, I think it was 2017 sometime, and basically said that there's going to be a pandemic in Donald Trump's presidency. Well, how would you know that? And then here, April 2nd, 2020, you have the Black Pope, the head of the Society of Jesus, the Jesuit order, um, and he comes out the superior general, he calls himself, and he comes out and he says, we can't go back. I mean, I've done a, I have a video showing him say this. He says, we can't go back. Um, you know, it's tempting to want to go back to the way the world used to be. And he said, we can't, because if we do, the next pandemic is going to be worse. But how does he know that there's another pandemic coming? How did Fauci know that there's a pandemic coming in President Donald Trump's time in office? I mean, don't these uh, viruses just kind of appear somewhere or whatever else? How can you say in the next four years, within the next four years, there's going to be a major pandemic? Oh, and by the way, um, Fauci is a Jesuit, which I've brought out in another video. He is part of the uh, Society of Jesus, organized religion. Their, uh, their system that they have there, the, the Jesuit order, if you don't know, was founded in the mid-16th century by Ignatius de Loyola. Um, it was a, he was a military officer. And he wanted to, to basically fight against the Reformation. So he came out with the Counter-Reformation, whereby all political countries and political movements out there, they were getting away from Roman Catholic control, from basically being subservient to the Pope. And they were saying, we'll do our own thing. We're protesting the abuses of Rome. Um, and so they were getting away from the authority of Rome. King Henry VIII, look into what he was doing. He created the Church of England because the Pope wouldn't give him permission to marry new wives and things. Again, historical fact. You can look into it. And so they did the Counter-Reformation. And the Counter-Reformation was, all right, all these people that are going away from Rome, we're going to get them and bring them right back to Rome again. And I find it interesting that today you have a man like Fauci, who's a Jesuit, and he speaks at Georgetown University, which is the oldest Jesuit school in America, the biggest, most influential Jesuit school in North America. There's Georgetowns all over the world, too. I find that interesting. But Fauci is a Jesuit. Donald Trump trained at Fordham University, Jesuit. And you get a lot of these other world leaders, they have ties to the Jesuit order. And then the Black Pope comes out and he says, we're not going to go back to the way the world used to be. And if we do, the next pandemic's going to be worse. That's a threat. Okay. I mean, again, if a pandemic just comes from a virus that shows up or whatever else, well, how can you say the next one's going to be worse? You don't know that. Uh, you, could predict and say, you could predict and say there could be one in the future that might be worse, but to say the next one will be worse. These guys have foreknowledge. What are they? Organized religion. Okay? And if you study what the Bible says, uh, because again, Organized religion, one of their favorite tactics is to turn people against Jesus Christ and the Bible. Uh, it's what they do. That's why they have all these systems of, and things that they, you know, their, their big churches, the tithe, the, all the vestments that they wear and everything else. Um, that stuff has no basis in Scripture. None. But see, they turn people, well-meaning people, against the Bible and against Jesus Christ, um, thinking that the Bible is corrupt, when in reality it's organized religion that's corrupt. But... Um, organized religion, if you study the scriptures, organized religion is what killed Jesus Christ, put him to death. God manifests in the flesh, comes down to the earth and says, I'm here. And he's walking around on the earth and the organized religious Jews of his day conspired with the Roman political authority of the, of the day and they execute Jesus Christ simply because he said he was God. 
which he was. But they said it's blasphemy. And Pilate, you know, the Roman uh, politician essentially of his day, he says, you know, Pontius Pilate, I find no fault in him. And they said, if you don't put him to death, you're, you're no friend of Caesar, basically. And so Pilate goes against the system of fair law and punishment, executes an innocent man. That's what happened there. And uh, not a whole lot has changed. Because today you have um, religion, organized religion, uh, basically using the political uh, world out there to do their bidding. Um, think about this. A man that's a Jesuit, this Dr. Fauci, is destroying the economy, the American economy, because his Jesuit master, the Black Pope, the Superior General, is saying, we need to change the world. We need to have one humanity. We need to bring everybody together and eliminate differences and eliminate this and eliminate that and, and whatever else. And the universal apostolic preferences, you know, that, that there are certain people that should be preferred above others. There are certain people who are more needed in society than others. So if your job is a really necessary thing, well, then you can continue going. But if you're not doing things that are really needed for the future, well, maybe we should just kind of limit you and, you know, eventually, you know, really limit you. But just a few points I want to make here. Um, then I'm going to show you what the Bible actually has to say about this this thing of organized religion destroying the earth, because that is ultimately what will happen. Um, there is coming a new world order. There is coming a one world government. And it's organized religion that's going to be doing this whole thing. The Antichrist shows up, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the Bible talk, talks about him. This man is going to show up and he will be the leader of the Catholic Church, but he will also be a political leader. He's going to merge both church and state you know, the atheists get out all upset about, you know, church and state. we got to keep church and state separate. Well, they're right in that. They're right. But they go after the wrong enemy. Cracks me up. Somebody has a cross out in front of a courthouse or something. They say, we got to take that down. Somebody's got the Ten Commandments, a monument to the Ten Commandments in front of a courthouse. We have to get rid of that. But they won't go after the Jesuits, these atheistic organizations. The Pope comes over and addresses Congress, and they just, you know, just quiet. Why did they let a religious leader come in to a secular place like the halls of Congress there and address the United States Congress? Hmm. Interesting. But here's a few points to consider. Number one, can you please show me any other man in the world that all political leaders come and visit? They all go visit the Pope at some point in time. All political leaders. You see them going in there and you know, bowing to each other and all and everything. And the man's wearing, you know, the, the leader will wear black, the Pope's in white, and his wife, you know, or whatever else will have black dress on with a black veil over her face. Yeah. Uh, who's really in charge? Hmm. You say, well, the Vatican's just a small little country. It's not controlling anything. Oh, please. The Vatican controls all nations. And if there are any that get out of control, all of a sudden there's a war in that country because this horrible leader's going rogue and, and they're doing this and they're a terrorist state and whatever else. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you say, well, how, I don't, how, how could they rule the whole world? It's, it, that, that's ridiculous. Um, they rule through their secret societies, like the Jesuits, the Freemasons, uh, their knighthoods, the Knights of Malta, the Knights of Templar, the Knights of the Equestrian Order, whatever else. Um, they go into the colleges and they put up their sororities and fraternities, which all are initiation into the higher ranking uh, secret societies. Um, the one out in uh, Nebraska, um, Exarbin, Nebraska spelled backwards. A little interesting black magic Satanism there, but we won't get into that. Um, but you go to that thing, you look into that, and there's a Catholic cardinal or bishop or something that's there in attendance. The uh, Al Smith dinner that they've been doing now for years and years that, you know, presidential candidates go and they go to this Catholic dinner and they sit on either side of the Archbishop of New York, Timothy Dolan. Hmm. Um, and you start looking into this stuff. Again, you don't have to believe me for one minute. If you are an atheist or some, 
you know, you say, I'm, I believe in you know, logic and reason and think, okay, all you got to do, just go look up any world politician and look at their ties to the Catholic Church. Look it up. Okay? Look at their ties to the Jesuits. Again, what are the Jesuits? The Jesuits, counter-reformation. Remember that. That's their stated mission, their stated goal. Okay? Um, and again, thirdly, understand. You say, well, I don't understand. Why would a man who's elected to some political office in America destroy America? That's his country. No, his country is first and foremost Rome, the Vatican. Okay? First and foremost, they are loyal to the Roman Catholic Church that tells them, that gives them their marching orders. And if that means destroy your own country where you live and you have your wealth and everything else, they will do it. They will faithfully do it. Uh, do you ever hear the thing in the military to serve God and country? Mm -hmm. Go kill yourself. You know, go out there and do some suicide mission or whatever else. Well, why? Well, for God and country. They're really saying for Pope and country. All right. <clears throat> oh, and you know, and it just cracked me up. I saw this this uh, image the other day of this picture of these people protesting. You know, this whole. Um, Jesuit created coronavirus scam and they're wearing Guy Fawkes masks. Guy Fawkes is a Jesuit. Okay, you're, you're really brilliant there. The gunpowder plot back in the, you know, uh, early 1600s there with King James and the members of Parliament. Jesuits tried to blow it up. You know, <laughs> not too smart. Oh, let's, let's fight the Jesuit, you know, system by wearing a mask of a Jesuit. Brilliant. Um, yeah, so that's that's all the points I wanted to make. But we're, I'm going to show you two things in Scripture here real quickly. The two most prophetically significant books of the King James Bible are the books of Daniel in the Old Testament and the book of Revelation in the New Testament. So I just want to show you that the, that the Bible... This Bible right here, and you can use any Bible too, by the way. The King James Bible is the best. Uh, it's the Word of God. It's not about best translation. It's the Word of God. Um, but even the Roman Catholic Bibles still show these, these prophecies. Um, not as accurately as the King James, but um, Daniel chapter 2, verse 40 through 45. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar in the... Old Testament times, he sees this vision, his kind of bad dream kind of a thing, and nobody can interpret what it meant. And he's saying, you have to not only tell me the interpretation, you have to tell me what the dream is because I forgot what it was. And Daniel comes and he says, this is the dream and this is the interpretation. And Nebuchadnezzar says, yeah, that is the dream and that's pretty amazing interpretation. And he goes through this five different world kingdoms that are going to happen. Verse 40, And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Of course, what was the iron legions of Rome? Um, two legs on the statue. The two, you know, the, the Rome split into two different kingdoms there. Verse 41, And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Okay, notice it does not say, uh, and in the fifth kingdom, the fourth ends and then in the fifth. It just merges. Fourth goes right into the fifth kingdom. Okay, that's very important to understand because Rome, uh, imperial Rome um, never went away. Uh, Pontificus Maximus uh, became the supreme pontiff, also known as the Pope. Okay, you have to understand that. Caesar became Pope. All right, and that kingdom is not as powerful. The Roman Catholic Church does not have the same power that the original Roman Empire had. There have been times that they have had some weak times where people were able to get away with things and whatever else. America is a great example of that. Um, the separatists that came here, my ancestors were separatists that came here um, in 1714 
actually the, the first Denlingers came to Pennsylvania. So we were part of that, my ancestors were part of that movement. We came here to America to get away from Roman Catholic control. So they weren't, it's not the Iron Legions anymore, it's the part iron, part clay. But uh, verse 43, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. There's no question. These things are going to happen. Okay, they already are happening. The Roman Catholic Church rules the world through their knighthoods, through their secret societies, through these different, you know, selected, not elected officials. All right, Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And if you look at, you say, what are these waters? Well, verse 15 says, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay, again, a woman, holy mother church. They worship Mary. And don't tell me, oh, we don't worship Mary. Yes, they do. Okay, they'll say, well, we venerate Mary. Whatever. Holy mother church sits on many people. It's the world's biggest religion. Organized religion, you see. But let's continue. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. All the political dealings and things between Rome and the different pol political leaders out there. People have been made drunk with that. Uh, the, the whole currency thing right now, all these world currencies and, and whatever else, people have been made drunk with this phony money, this, this inflated paper money. People are walking around thinking that they're rich and they're not. They're poor. They're just, you know, in debt, horribly in debt slaves. Verse 3, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-collared beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet collar. Purple, bishops, scarlet, the cardinals. I mean, what other country has purple and scarlet? These people say, oh, you know, America. America is bad. Mystery Babylon. Oh, you know, it's red, white, and blue. Okay? People are crazy. Um, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Again, name any politician out there that's that's got a golden cup with jewels on it and all kinds of stuff and wears, you know, precious stones and things on his garments. Show me anyone. There aren't any, except for the Pope. Verse 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Let me tell you a real quick little standard that you can have, saved or lost out there, if you see anybody that claims to be a preacher and they say that Mystery Babylon is anybody other than the Roman Catholic Church, mark them down instantly that they're false. Period. The Roman Catholic Church, history has proven that they have slaughtered, slaughtered Christians. They have. Adolf Hitler signed the Concordat with the Vatican historical fact. It's right there. Fox's Book of Martyrs, Martyr's Mirror. There's a whole bunch of old books that are written about the torturing that the Catholic Church did, the Spanish, in Spanish Inquisition. 
just slaughtering millions and millions and millions of people. And the Catholics will come out and say, none of those things are true. We didn't do that. We're innocent. <laughs> or my favorite one, well, Protestants killed Catholics too. You know, yeah, sure. Okay. Then the Bible is not true. The Bible, Bible plainly identifies who Mystery Babylon is. And Mystery Babylon is destroying the earth. Mystery Babylon is behind this whole coronavirus pandemic thing. This whole thing of shutting down the economy. They did the coronavirus pandemic scare for people say pandemic or fear-demic and things. That's a good way to put it. They did this whole thing to destroy the economy. I mean, it's, it's, it would be similar to coming along and saying, hey, you know what? There's some bad uh, cases of athlete's foot going around out there, the fungal stuff on your feet. So uh, we're going to amputate your leg. And you won't get athlete's foot. Huh? You know? Hey, we want to keep you from getting coronavirus, so we're going to force you to stay home uh, without due process of law or anything else. You know, we're going to put you under house arrest and destroy you economically to keep you safe. Well, uh, isn't that going to bankrupt me and make me not able to buy groceries and things? Won't that make me sicker by destroying me economically? Yes, but you, at least you won't get coronavirus. And then you look at who's behind the whole thing, behind who's behind the hype and the hysteria and everything, and it's Catholics. Jesuits in particular. And the black pope, the head of the Jesuit order, comes out and says, if we don't change, if people don't change, the next one's going to be worse. It's right in front of your face. Now, if you're wicked, well, you're probably not going to understand this stuff. If you're just watching this video and you love your sin and whatever else, well, just go on, watch something else, leave a little snarky comment down there, whatever else, something for me to delete or my moderators to, you know, get rid of, whatever. But if you're wise, you'll think about these things. Um, and I'd be real careful about some of the truth movement too, by the way, because a lot of these truthers are themselves papists. And uh, they'll come out and they'll yell and rant and rave about how terrible this whole thing is and the destruction of our civil rights and we need to civil disobedience and I'm calling for this and we need to get the economy restarted and we need to get back to the gold and silver standard and blah, 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 blah. What about the Jesuits? What about the Knights of the Equestrian Order? What about the Knights of Malta? What about the Freemasons? What about this? What about that? Oh, well, uh, I don't want to talk about that. What's the matter there, big, bold truther? You can come out and you can run your mouth about all the evil and all the corruption and everything else, and hey, I don't care if I go to jail, but you'll keep your mouth shut when it comes to kicking the whore of Revelation 17 and the fifth kingdom of Daniel chapter 2. All of a sudden, I don't want to talk about that stuff. I was raised Catholic, and I don't really go to the Catholic Church anymore, but I don't dare speak against them. Oh, oh, oh. Cowards. Lost cowards. I understand why they don't want to speak against it. Um, here's the other thing. Back in the book of Proverbs in the Old Testament, there's a concept there that's spoken of, that you're to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. Okay? Verse of Scripture about that. And what happens is, a lot of these people that get raised in the Catholic Church, they will never speak against it unless they get saved. If the Holy Spirit of God moves in to their body, the Holy Spirit of God takes away that spirit of fear and gives them a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. And they can say, you know what? Now I'm going to come out against the Catholic Church. Now I'll name the Jesuits. Now I'll name the Knights of Equestrian Order or Knights of Malta or Knights of Columbus or whoever. Now I know who the real enemy is. But if they reject Jesus Christ and they have pleasure in their unrighteousness, they'll shut their mouths about the Catholic Church, and they'll never come out. They'll say, oh, you know, Fauci, you know, yeah, he spoke at Georgetown, but let's not talk about what that makes him. Let's not talk about the fact that he's a Jesuit. Let's not talk about the black pope coming out and saying there's going to be a worse pandemic in the future. Let's just just kind of not talk about that and, and just say my favorite thing that these, these people say, you know, what, what we need to do, we need to vote these people out of office. Oh, when has that ever worked? It doesn't. Why? Because the Bible says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Mystery. 
Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The kings commit fornication with her, and the people are drunken because of that fornication. Oh, let's vote them out. Let's, you know, we're going to go out. We're going to have well, let's let's have peaceful protests. Let's get out there and just you know the power is within you. We can come together. Humanity needs to rise up. You know, and you'll see these guys, they'll come out and they say a lot of good stuff. Saw one recently, this Dr. Buttar. People put the link in my one of my videos, the comment section. They said, you gotta watch this Dr. Buttar guy. A lot of what he was saying I was agreeing with. And then all of a sudden he comes out and he says, We need to put aside our religious differences. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter. We can we need to unite against the common evil. And I thought, <laughs> that's the new world order. That's the one world government. He's ripping on Fauci, Dr. Fauci, but he doesn't bring up the fact that the man is a Jesuit. Doesn't matter what your religious convictions are. That's not what the Bible says. Hey, there's a woman out there, and we don't really want to name who she is, and I don't really want to make any problem. Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partaker of her sins. Get out of the Vatican. Get out of the Roman Catholic Church. Not these truthers. Well, if you're a Catholic, that's okay. Catholic, Protestant, whatever. You know, uh, Martin Lucifer King. You know, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics can all join and say, we're free at last, free at last. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not free. You're not free. You're a servant of hell. You don't come out against the Vatican. You don't come out against the Catholic Church and name the names and say, it's the Vatican. It's what the Bible says. The Bible says it's the Roman Catholic Church. It's the Jesuits. It's the Knights of Malta. It's the... You don't come out with that stuff? You're never going to change a thing. Ever. And what you say really doesn't amount to, uh, amount to much of anything. Go forecast the weather. You know? Oh, look, it's raining. It's, it's really bad. The wind's bad. Oh, the tree fell over. It, I'm reporting on bad things. Yeah, what's your solution? Oh, look, our rights are being taken away. The economy is being destroyed. What's your solution? Return to the gold standard and vote good politicians in. No, no. The Bible gives the solution. Name the one that's involved. Name the one that's taken, that's making this whole thing happen. The Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church. And I get so ticked off. I, I mean, there are atheists out there that attack me because I attack Catholicism. Professing atheists. Of course, they're just, you know, pre-Vatican II Catholics posing as atheists. I, I get it. I understand that. But if you're an atheist out there, don't attack the book. <laughs> okay? This isn't your enemy. I'm not your enemy. The Vatican. Organized religion. And by the way, what's it say in Revelation 17? Mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Did you know that the Vatican has a lot of daughters? You say, well, I don't think I want anything to do with Christianity because look how many different denominations there are. Uh, actually, they're called daughters. Daughters of the harlot. That's why you look at the Baptist church and you say, wait a second, Sunday best, altar, somebody up there reading the scriptures, the, the cantor, in Catholicism, church building, all these other things. I don't see that in here. Where'd they get it from? Their mother, Lutheran. Oh, uh, well, we don't believe in uh, transubstantiation. We believe in consubstantiation or, or some other kind of a thing. Or, or we believe in it. Uh, where's that at in Scripture? Oh, we believe in baptizing our infants. Where did anybody do that in Scripture? It's not in here. Well, the Catholic Church does it. Oh, then you got it from your mother. You didn't get it from God the Father. He wrote the book. He said, I thought the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost and God the Father and Jesus Christ are one being named God, <laughs> the Lord, you know. Um, you see what I'm saying? The mother of harlots... She has a bunch of daughters out there. Stay away from them. You say, I'd like to know about God. Okay, praise the Lord. Don't go to church. Don't ever go to church. Um, 
what should I do? Get a King James Bible. Not the other ones, the new versions and whatever else, the easier to understand. You look at that, they're from the Vatican. Second Vatican Council, they talked about making translations together with separated brethren. Okay? They're daughters. Mommy and her little girls get together and they make nice little pretty Bibles. That's not the case with this one. The Catholic Church has forbidden this King James Bible. I've talked to many a Catholic, former Catholic, and even current Catholics, and they say, yeah, we're taught in you know, Catholic school, don't read the King James Bible. Let's see if I can find this real quick here. I'll tell you the reason why, one of the reasons why. To the Most High and Mighty Prince James, the dedicatory right here in the front, um, which hath given such a blow unto that man of sin as will not be healed. Talking about this book coming out. Right there, the highlighted red part. Next page. So that if on the one side we shall be traduced by popish persons at home or abroad. Popish persons. Do you mean to tell me that the King James translation is a little hard on the Vatican? The Roman Catholic Church? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, Erasmus was a Roman Catholic. Yeah. And the text that he came out with wasn't even the text that underlied this. Okay. It was, I think, Stephanus or Beza. I can't remember which one of them. It was a later edition of what Erasmus started. But uh, please show me one translation that uh, came from the Catholic Church that, was, that ever used um, Erasmus's text. And Erasmus was basically um, in exile from the Vatican when, you know, when he died. Whole other issue there. But my whole point is, this thing is the truth. And this thing tells you what's going to happen in the end times. It tells you that there's coming a radical religious leader who's going to merge one more time that religious and political sphere together. And he's going to come. And by the way, He's going to come. The Bible says he has a bow. You know how you shoot a bow? Hmm. Peace. Let's pray for world peace. Uh-huh. Those people are getting ready for the Antichrist. By peace he shall destroy many. You see? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Bless you, my children. Causes the mark to be upon the forehead. Ash Wednesday, did you ever see Catholics going around? They got this black mark up there. Hmm. Interesting. Um, if you're a lost atheist or whatever, uh, you really ought to look into this stuff. And, you know, you worry about organized religion and things like that. Oh, you don't know the half of it. Okay. <laughs> you don't know how deep this conspiracy goes with the Jesuits. I mean, look at it, just, just look up any kind of powerful people, whatever. You're going to see a lot of times they're Jesuits or some other Catholic knighthood. Freemasonry, you know, is subservient to the Vatican, absolutely subservient to the Vatican. Uh, it's the, you know, Protestant form of, of Jesuit knighthood, essentially, uh, which the Protestants have all gone back to the Vatican. There's not one Protestant denomination that hasn't. Um, and the Baptists act just pretty much like any other ones there. So you can't say, well, the independent, you know, fundamental Baptists, they're independent. Uh, no, they're not. They're independent of the Bible. That's true. But um, they're all, all these churches. They're all daughters of the whore. That's all they are. Organized religion is going to destroy this planet until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. Then he's going to destroy them. Um, and it's going to be a wonderful day. You see, you say, well, I, I want peace. I really just, I desire for peace. I, I, okay, peace comes when the Vatican is in ruins, when it is destroyed, the city over there, that great city that reigns over the kings of the earth. Revelation 18 talks about that. Peace comes when the Vatican is destroyed and every Jesuit and every Knight of Columbus and every Knight of Malta and every Knight, all the Catholic knighthoods, all the Freemasons, when they are all dead. I'm not going to go after him. I'm not going to do anything about it. That's the Lord's doing in the future. 
but that's the only time we're going to have peace. If you think, well, we'll vote somebody in. We'll get somebody voted in there, whatever else, and, 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 and then we'll have peace. You're kidding yourself. The Jesuits all have to be gone. The Vatican has to be gone. And until that day, there's not going to be peace. Plain and simple. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.